Good day, Kavibal, and welcome to our Learn at Home Facebook Live Learning Session. For the discussion today, the topic will be on an introduction to culture-based education in the Philippines. Before we begin, take note of the following reminders. Make sure you are registered to the webinar to have your e-certificate of participation. Visit certificate.vibalgroup.com to generate your proof of attendance. Share the video using hashtag LearnUs1PH as our official hashtag to our Vibal webinars. Experience learning, Kavibal! And now, to proceed with our webinar this evening, it is my pleasure to introduce to you our distinguished speaker today. Si Aldrin John D. Kabilin ay guro ng Araling Pandipuran sa St. Mary's Academy, Pasay. Kabilang siya sa Internal Quality Auditor at Strategic Plan Committee, Student Services ng nasabing paaralan. Nagtapos siya mula sa pamantasan ng lungsod ng Manila at nabigyan ng pagkakataong makapag-aral sa Genesis 2.0, Social Community Course sa Japan sa ilalim ng National Youth Commission of the Philippines at Japan International Cooperation Center noong taong 2015. May malawak siyang karanasan sa pagtuturo at pagsasalita patungkol sa edukasyon, kultura, kasarian at humanidades. Kamakailan lang ay nagtapos siya ng Master ng Sining sa Araling Filipino, Wika, Kultura at Media sa Pamantasang De La Salle, Maynila at ginawaran ng Most Outstanding Masteral Thesis ng Departamento. Ladies and gentlemen, let us all welcome.
Again, I would like to introduce our speaker for this evening. Si Eldrin John de Cabilin ay guro ng Araling Panlipunan sa St. Mary's Academy, Pasay. Kabilang siya sa Internal Quality Auditor at Strategic Plan Committee Student Services ng nasabing paaralan. Nagtapos siya mula sa pamantasan ng lungsod ng Maynila at nabigyan ng pagkakataong makapag-aral sa Genesis 2.0, Social Community Course sa Japan sa ilalim ng National Youth Commission of the Philippines at Japan International Cooperation Center noong taong 2015. May malawak siyang karanasan sa pagtuturo at pagsasalita patungkol sa edukasyon, kultura, kasarian at humanidades. Kamakailan lang ay nagtapos siya ng Master ng Sining sa Araling Filipino, Wika, Kultura at Media sa Pamantasang De La Salle, Maynila at ginawaran ng Most Outstanding Masteral Thesis ng Departamento. Ladies and gentlemen, let us all welcome Mr. Eldrin John D. Cabilin. Maraming salamat, Vibal. Good evening, Luzon, Visayas, and Mindanao, and even across the borders. Magandang gabi po sa inyong lahat. Thank you for welcoming me back here in the loop to discuss pertinent topic about our present educational character. To all our viewers, particularly sa ating mga guro, mga mag-aaral, mga magulang, I hope you can pick up to harvest something in tonight's discussion. Of course, this webinar will not be possible without the undying effort of Vibal, kaya maraming maraming salamat sa Vibal Group. Join us in this half an hour discussion, but first, do not forget to like and share the Vibal Facebook page to know more about um, Vibal, and do not forget also to like and share our discussion video for tonight, so that together we can hashtag Learn as one PH and hashtag learn at home. Allow me to share screen to you the, the material that I will use for tonight's discussion. The title of my uh, discussion of our topic for tonight is an introduction to culture-based education or CBE in the Philippines. This topic is not new anymore for most of our teachers because this is a special topic that, that is introduced in the special topic classes and something that we all know as educators. But tonight I will introduce once more what is culture-based education, specifically in the context of our own curriculum offerings and curricular, curricular offerings here in the Philippines? This is something that we have to implement and integrate, especially to some of our schools here in the metro. Why? Because at the end of the day, we have to go back to our root. And that talks about the concept of what we call culture. To, for the smooth flow of our discussion about introduction to culture-based education or CBE in the Philippines, here is our flow of discussion. First, I will give you a glimpse to the current educational system that we have right now. Particularly, um, since we all know that we have been, we have been influenced by uh, the different colonizers from the, Span from the Spanish occupation, American and the Japanese occupation, of course, they have made an impact to our, to our roots, to our cultural setup. So we'll, we'll look at into the educational system and to the educational sector. Another is that I will lay down to you the concept of what is culture-based education. And of course, I will introduce also some of the instructional materials, sample instructional materials, where it is aligned to the concept and to the call of culture-based education in our country, particularly the one that is drafted and created by the Vibal Group, which we called as the Learn at Home Kit. And of course, I'll present to you the legal foundations 
of culture-based education in the Philippines. It's necessity based on some of the legal and statutory um, foundations of CBE in the Philippines. So let us start our discussion. First, I have here a statement. Patunayan o pasinungalingan, the Philippine educational system is very colonial in nature. Of course, as what I have initially mentioned with you, we have been subjected to colonization for a long period of time. From the Spanish occupation, American occupation, and the Japanese uh, occupation, in which they greatly affect and influence the way of living, our way of life. It affects the totality of our culture, and one of which is, of course, the educational sector. So I can say, I affirm that the Philippine educational system, even up to the present period, is very colonial in nature. Why? For example, uh, we have the controversial uh, CHED Memorandum Order Number 20, Series of 2014, wherein, in our present general education curriculum in colleges and universities, these are the courses that are being offered in their GEC. Under the CHED Memo Number 20, Series of 2014, it is still classified into three types of courses. We have the core courses, the elective courses, and the mandated courses. Under the core courses, we have a total of eight courses or subjects. And each course subject has a total of three units, three units course. So eight times, eight times three is a total of 24 units course for the course. Uh, under the electives, we have a total of three courses. Each course has each course has a total of three unit course. So three times three is a total of nine unit course. And for the mandated, we have one, which is equivalent to three unit course. So under the, the core courses being offered in colleges and universities in the general education curriculum, based on the CHED memo or the number 20 series of 2014, we have the following subjects: understanding self. Reading in the Philippine history, mathematics in the modern world, the contemporary world, purposive communication, art appreciation, science, technology, and society, and ethics. If you notice, among the core courses being offered in the GEC under the CHED Memo number, number 20 series of 2014, there is no particular course or subject for Filipino, literature and Philippine government and constitution. Wherein, these subjects, itong mga asignaturang ito, Pilipino, literatura, at pag-aaral ng politika mismo ng ating bansa, they are all imperative, relevant in the promotion and strengthening of our very own cultural identity and national development. So I affirm the statement that I have presented to you a while ago that the Philippine educational system at the present period is definitely colonial in nature. Okay? The Western concept is very much embraced and very, very much um, seen in our curriculum offerings. For the elective courses, we have arts and humanities, social science and philosophy, mathematics, science and technology, and under the mandated, of course, we have the life and works of Dr. Jose Rizal. So these three subjects, bakit wala siya under the CHED memo or their number 20? The Filipino, the literature, and Philippine government and constitution, wherein they are all imperative in the development of who we are, what we are as a Filipino people. Napakahalaga ng mga asignaturang ito. That's why many universities and colleges, even if there is the abolishment of these three particular subjects, Filipino literature and Philippine government and constitution, they still opt to have this subject. 
patuloy pa rin nilang ino-offer ito. Marami pa rin tayong mga universidad at kolehiyo sa ating bansa na patuloy na, nagsis, na, na patuloy na nagsusulong sa mga nasabing asignatura. So because of that, I affirm the first statement that I have presented to you. And that is where we are coming from. That is where the necessity for the culture-based education is very important. Especially for most of our audience here who are in the basic education curriculum, mga basic education sector, mga nagtuturo mula K to 12, from kinder to grade 12, this is something that we have to integrate in our curriculum offerings, in our curriculum design, the concept of what we call culture-based education. Why? Because culture-based education emerge as an alternative approach to the Western and colonial educational approach that we have. Actually, this particular concept of culture-based education is not just applicable in the Philippines. Even to other countries, they are still in the process of trying their very best to place in the limelight their very own cultural identity. Lalo na yung mga mga naging bansang mga bansang sinakop at nasakop na mga bansang kolonyal. Kagaya natin ang Pilipinas sa pagkahaba-haba ng ating kasaysayan ay makikita natin na malaki ang naging ap at apek uh, naging epekto sa pamumuhay at danas ng maraming Pilipino sa panahon ng Espanyol, Amerikano at ng Hapones. So there is really the need the call for us to introduce culture-based education in our curriculum design and in our curriculum offerings. From the way we teach, it talks about our strategies and methodologies, from our instructional, dis, uh, instructional materials, our IMs, our examples, our assessment tools, we can integrate the concept of culture-based education, right? And one of the very good example of culture-based education in our country. Later on, I will present to you some of the disciplines that were introduced na nakapokus sa pag-aaral ng mismong sa atin o sa kultura natin. As what I've mentioned with you, the concept of culture-based education is not new anymore because many educational researchers are trying their very best in order to look for ways and possibilities in order for them to adopt their own identity, their own beliefs, arts, tradition, and many more that revolves up about the concept of culture. So there are terms that are used by educational researchers over the past century to denote what is culture-based education. According to the study of Gay and Yamauchi, these are just some of the terms that they use. Culturally responsive, culturally respective, culture sensitive, culturally rooted, culturally relevant, and culturally congruent. Why? Because we cannot, we cannot get out of the fact that we as a people of our own country is intertwined to the different aspects and different um, faces of our society. Kabuhol tayo sa lipunang ginagalawan natin mula sa paniniwala, mula sa mga halagahin, mula sa pananamit, mula sa wikang ginagamit natin para sa talastasan, pakikipagtalastasan, tayo ay kabahagi nito. Kaya tayo bilang isang guro at ang paaralan bilang bahagi at mahalagang bahagi ng, ng lipunan natin, one of the one of the important factors in shaping us, in shaping a person, we must do our part in integrating and seeing to it that we are still rooted, that we are still in our root of our own identity. Bahagi pa rin tayo at nakatalim pa rin tayo sa ating sariling identidad. And one of the good example, as what I've mentioned with you, as a call to culture-based education ay walang iba kung hindi ang binuong konsepto ni Virgilio Enriquez na tinatawag nating psikolohiyang Filipino or Filipino psychology. 
As what I've mentioned with you, when we talk about culture-based education, it talks about as an alternative to the Western concept. No? Sabi ni Dr. Pepo, ah, even Dr. Jose Rizal, yung mga ilustrado sa panahon ng na nakapag yung mga ilustrado sa panahon ng Espanyol, mga Pilipinong nakapag-aaral sa panahong kolonyal, kagaya ni Dr. Jose Rizal, Marcelo del Pilar at iba pang mga ilustrado, even they, even them make a comment on the curriculum offering that they have. Partikular sa pag-aaral nila ng psikolohiya na ang pag-aaral nila ay talagang nakakonsepto o nakabase sa pag-aaral ng Western concept. Kaya nabuhay at binuhay ni Virgilio Enriquez ang, ang disiplina ng psikolohiyang Pilipino. Na kung saan, sinabi niya, bakit tayo kinakailangan, bakit hindi natin subukin na mismong ang sariling atin, ang sariling kultura at ang sariling danas ng mga tao sa lipunan natin at sa bansa natin ang siyang sipatin natin bilang isang disiplina na maaari nating payabungin sa mga susunod pang panahon. And that is how psikolohiyang Pilipino or Filipino psychology emerges. Ito ay bunga mismo ng karanasan, kaisipan at orientasyon walang iba kundi nating mga Pilipino. Kaya mula sa metodo o pamamaraan ng pananaliksik ay nakaangkla ito sa pamamaraang sa atin. No? It is there is the indigenization and culturation of our very own. Ito ay para mas higit na maunawaan ng isang Pilipino o ng bawat isa sa atin ang kanyang sarili nang sa ganon ay mapaunlad ang mapaunlad niya ang kanyang buhay yung iba't ibang aspeto ng kanyang buhay bilang isang tao and as what i've mentioned with you culture based education talks about the alternative way on how we can deconstruct the colonial approach in teaching a particular discipline tayo ay nagbabaklas umaalis tayo sa kahon ito ay isang alternatibong perspektibo kung paano ipaliliwanag ang pag-iisip, pagkilos at damdaming Pilipino na malaking kaibahan sa mga pananaw ng iba pang anyo ng psikolohiya sa Pilipinas. That is, this is one of the good example that talks about culture-based education. The discipline that is introduced by Virgilio Enriquez, popular, popularly known as Filipino psychology o psikolohiyang Pilipino. Kaya nga, In, in the sample that uh, I will present to you, particularly this instructional materials that is created by the uh, Vibal group, the Learn at Home Kit is something that is aligned to the concept and context of what is culture-based education. So I'll, I'll go around down to you. No? Samahan ninyo ko sa pagbubuklat ng, ng Learn at Home Kit na dinisenyo ng Vibal para sa mga mag-aaral natin, lalo na yung mga nasa tahanan na pinili ang pag-aaral sa loob ng tahanan. So we have here a sample, a test booklet in the secondary level or in the high school level, first quarter, here in English. See? So one of the best way we can implement, we can integrate in our curriculum offerings, in our teaching process, the culture-based education is with the use of literary text that talks about us. So halibawa is the Visayan creation myth. So instead of looking for other foreign materials, why not look for our own? Mas maiintindihan, uh, mas, mas lalawak pa ang pananaw at kaalaman ng mag-aaral patungkol sa sariling atin. So isa sa maganda yan, no? Yung when you when you pick a particular literary text for your for a reading a reading text in your examinations or in your assessment tools, you have to at, as much as you can tailor fit it which is all about our very own identity, our own uh, literary text. Another thing, when you create your questions or in test construction, try your very best also to align it to the call of culture-based education. Say, for example, uh, these are questions based on the literary text that I have presented to you. 
What does the story suggest about early Filipinos? What is the message of the story with respect to Filipino culture? And what is the similarity of Filipinos' present and ancient beliefs based on the story below? So, sa pagkakabuo din natin ng mga katanungan, hanggang sa kaya natin na iangkla ito sa panawagan ng culture-based education, why not do it? Right? Next, uh, sa mga halimbawa, this is Filipino naman. Ito ay Filipino na assessment tool. Ang ginamit niyang halimbawa ay tungkol sa datu, patungkol sa prinsesa at maraming iba pa. Next one, activity sheets. We are still in the learn at home uh, by Vibal. Activity sheets, secondary quarter one. So high school pa rin ito. Performance task. See? The performance standard is there. Writing an alternate ending to a story. What, what I like here the most is the choice of the literary text. Have you read the story of Lorante at Laura by Francisco Balagtas? You see, the sample is from our own literary text, the Florante at Laura. If you have, write down its ending in the space provided. If you have not, read the story before writing down your answer in so as much as you can, manap tayo ng mga teksto, ng mga halimbawa ng sariling atin. Next one, performance task, I guess, this is still in Filipino, pagsusuri ng isang docufilm. What I like the most here is the choice of the docufilm, particularly, particularly the focus of the docufilm na kung saan ay humanap sa YouTube o manood sa telebisyon ng isang docufilm patungkol sa tao, lugar, o pangyayari sa Mindanao. Kita nyo? So maganda ito, sapagkat ang pinopokus na ipinagagawa ninyo sa bata na pagsusuri ng isang docufilm ay nakaangkla sa pagkilala niya sa tao, lugar, o pangyayari sa Mindanao. That's an example of how culture-based education works. Pagpalagay na ikaw ay kasami, kasapi ng samahan ng manunuri ng mga pelikulang Filipino. Suriin ang docufilm na iyong napanood batay sa gabay sa pagsusuri. Iulat sa harap ng iyong magulang ang iyong ginawang pagsusuri. See? The performance standard is pagsusuri ng isang docufilm but the material that you can use can be tailored fit in the call of culture-based education. Next is performance task. Still, this is, I guess, Filipino. Paglalarawan ng gawi at kilos ng mga kalahok sa dulang panlansangan. So that is the performance standard. And look at the examples na pinahahanap ng mga dulang panlansangan, mga, mga street theater, panunuluyan, sinakulo, salubong, at tibag. These are all uh, it all these are all reflection of uh, our very own activities during Holy Week no mga nakasentro sa sa panahon ng Semana Santa panunuluyan sinakulo sa lubang at tibag at iba pa mga religious activity natin dito sa ating bansa okay na naka-culture base nakaangkla sa ating sariling uh, kung ano ang meron tayo Next, for the examples, I guess this is for science subject, performance task number nine. The examples that were given here, it's all about volcanic mapping, but the samples focuses on Mayon Volcano and Mount Pinatubo. This is science. Next, intermediate naman tayo. Uh, quarter one, unang markahan, activity sheets. So we have here a performance task number one, writing a tour material. Look at the topic. Do you feel proud of your identity as a Filipino? Would you like it if people from other countries come to visit, see, and know more about our country? If it was up to you, how would you introduce the Philippines to them? Try writing a tourism flyer that will exhibit the beauty of the Philippines through the following guide. You see, naka-tailored fit siya sa konteksto ng panawagan ng higit pang pagkilala sa sariling atin. This one is from Filipino Intermediate Performance Test Number 5. 
the performance standards there or the competencies there na isusulat ng malinaw at wasto ang mga pangungusap at talata. Look at the example text. Look at the paragraph. It's all about copy reading. Pero ang, halimba ang halimbawa ay nakakonsepto sa buhay ng isa nating bayani. Walang ipa kung hindi si Apolinario Mabini. Kasi you can look for the life of Queen Elizabeth. You can look for the life of uh, Leonardo da Vinci and many more. Pero ginamit dito ang buhay ni Apolinario Mabini. So as much as we can teachers in giving assessments, examples, for example, painters. We have Fernando Amorsolo. We have Carlos uh, Botong Francisco. We have Edades and many more. Mga kilalang Pilipino na kayang makipagsabayan sa konsepto ng pagpipinta, ng sining. We can use them as our examples in our discussion. We can use these particular things in our test constructions, in our activities, and many more. So that is how the, that is how the uh, Learn at Home kit is aligned to the call of culture-based education. All right? Next. So in the culture-based education, it is the focus. It must be part and integrated of our curriculum offerings, of our curriculum design. We can look into these three facets in order for us to easily facilitate integrating culture-based education in our curriculum design and in our curriculum offerings. Of course, in the culture-based education, number one, it promotes respect for multi-ethnic diverse knowledge and systems and skills. And second, when we do the pedagogy in culture-based education, it must be contextualized. The contextualization of sociocultural concepts. And last, our examples in the teaching learning process, as much as we can, should be localized. The localization in educational practices. So if we try to, to use these three particular facets in the culture-based education curriculum, this will help us to easily facilitate it in designing CBE as a part of your curriculum offerings and part of your curriculum design. Kaya nga, the culture-based education, the culture-based education in the Philippines, number one, according to Lopez, helps us to develop among Filipinos a greater awareness understanding, and of course, appreciation of our history, of our arts, geography, heritage, towards the development of a consciousness that will level up and help us to accent the quality of our life. And of course, when we do that, when we integrate culture-based education in the Philippines, it is an attempt to deconstruct, pag -de pag deconstruction, pagbasag, ano pa ba, uh, pagmumulat natin sa sariling atin, an attempt to deconstruct or our post-colonial interrogation of our colonial history, heritage, and identity. Why? Because this culture-based education in our curriculum can serve as the window to the Filipino soul. That is why this is a call to many schools to try to integrate culture-based education in your curriculum offerings. And when you do that, one of the things that you have to do ay ang diskursong ibinahagi sa atin ni Zeus Salazar. Walang iba kung hindi ang pantayong pananaw bilang diskursong pangkabiasnan. Dito, sinasabi niya upang mas higit ang pagkakakilanlan at mas buo there's a holistic development of a person and of our identity. Mahalaga na iangkop o ilangkap natin ang pag-aaral ng isang disiplina sa sariling atin, sa kung ano ang meron tayo. Mula sa, mula sa ating paniniwala, sa ating naging danas, at maraming iba pa. Kaya ang pana, pantayong pananaw ay ginagamit bilang isang metodo ng pagkilala 
ng kasaysayan at kalinangang Pilipino na nakabatay mismong sa panloob na pagkakaugnay-ugnay at pag-uugnay ng mga katangian, halagahin or values, kaalaman, karunungan, hangarin, kaugalian, pag-aasal at karanasan ng iisang kabuang pangkalinangan. Kabuang na babalot sa at ipinapahayag sa pamamagitan ng iisang wika. That is why um, the pantayong pananaw and also the psikolohiyang Pilipino, dahil nakakonteksto ito sa pag-aaral mismo ng sariling atin, isinasandig din ito at ipinapanukala din ito na gamitin mismo ang sarili nating wika. Kaya huwag tayong matakot kahit pa ang asignatura natin ay mathematics or science na gamitin yung mga salitang naisalin na sa sariling wika natin. Kaya rin patuloy din ang panawagan para sa intelektualisasyon ng wikang Filipino, particular sa iba't ibang disiplina, engineering, mathematics, abogasya, at maraming iba pa. No? Let us go to the go out of the box. Let's go out of our comfort zone in using our very own language. Diskursong pangkalinangan o pangkabihasnan, isang realidad ito sa loob ng alinmang etnolinguistikong grupo na may kabuuan at kakanyahan sa atin at sa iba pang dako ng mundo. Kaya itong panawagan ng pantayong pananaw ni Jesus Salazar, ang panawagan ng psikolohiyang Pilipino, lahat ng ito, these are all alternative approach on how we can deconstruct the post-colonial mentality, particularly in our educational system. So how can we do that? In the culture-based education, kinakailangan spiral tayo. From micro level up to the macro level, kinakailangan there is the full realization of culture-based education mula sa sarili natin, our self, family, community, nation, environment, and of course to our God. So that we can achieve and fully realize the concept of makadyos, makakalikasan, makatao, at makabansa. Alright? Now, one of the good uh, example is the Araling Panlipunan Curriculum. No? Hindi lamang ang aral Araling Panlipunan. Ang ibang asignatura din, gaya ng Filipino, ng MAPE, ay nakaangkla din mula sa micro level hanggang sa macro level na pagkatuto in the full realization of makadyos, makakalikasan, makatao at makabansa. Kaya sa, kaya sa Araling Panlipunan Curriculum, mayroong pitong tema sa pag-aaral ng tao, lipunan at kapaligaran, di ba? In the grade one sa in the grade one topics, they talk about self. Ako at ang aking sarili. Ako at ang aking pamilya. Ako at ang aking komunidad hanggang sa lumalawak ito. Kalawa, panahon, pagpapatuloy at pagbabago. Katlo, kultura, pagkakakilanlan at pagkabansa. Ikaapat, karapatan pananagutan at pagkamamamayan. Kalima, ikakapangyarihan, autoridad at pamamahala. Kaanin, produksyon, distribusyon at pagkonsumo at ikapito ay ugnayang panrehiyon at pangmundo. When we talk about spiral from the micro level, from the microscope to the macroscope, we have of course to consider also the totality or the holistic development of a person in the course of studying culture-based education. Kaya hindi lang ito nakasandig sa pag-aaral ng kultura. Ganon din nakasandig din ito sa pag-aaral ng sosyal, ng pampolitika at pang-economic na aspekto ng tao. Okay? So, when we go in designing culture-based education, as our curriculum, we have to look into the three facets of culture-based education, which is respect for multi-ethnic diverse, contextualization, and localization. And of course, we have to do it from micro level to macro level, plus the present curriculum that we have, the curriculum offering that we have right now, which is the K-12 basic education curriculum. Say, for example, the Araling Panlipunan curriculum. In order to arrive on a new design, 
which is culture-based education curriculum. So ito ang panawagan ko para sa maraming mga paaralan, lalo na dito sa Metro, to as much as possible integrate the use and the concept of culture-based education in your curriculum. And as what I've mentioned to you, it is not only for us in the Philippines, it has been observed also to other countries. Say, for example, in India, according to Kub Shandani, Mahatma Gandhi advocated the inclusion of practical knowledge and cottage skills such as traditional weaving known as sharka and dolan. So yan ay bahagi ng kanilang kurikulum. Sa kanilang kultura yan. Okay? And even agriculture into the basic education curriculum. And at the same time, they are very much into the usage of their own language or of their own local lingo francas and language for language acquisition and communicability. So pinahahalagahan din nila ang maliban sa kultura nila, maliban sa kanilang gawi, gawi ng buhay, yung charka andolan, which is all about weaving, pinahahalagahan din nila ang paggamit sa paaralan ng sarili nilang wika bilang wika as a language of acquisition and communicability. Not only in India, also in Tanzania, we have uh, here Julius Nyerere, who is very much famous in his philosophy of education for self-reliance. Kagaya ng sa India, panawagan din sa Tanzania ni Julius Nyerere ang paggamit ng kanilang sariling wika, which is called the Kishwali, the Kishwahili. All right? And in 1967, the Local language in Tanzania, which is the Kishwahili, was made now as the sole language of instruction for primary education and was planned to extend even up to the secondary education. Sa pagkat dapat tunayin naman natin na malaki ang bahagi ng wika sa pagkakabuo natin bilang isang tao at ng ating identidad sa kulturang kinapapalooban natin. Okay? So, these are just sample of the countries that observe culture-based education. Last on our discussion are the legal foundations of culture-based education in the Philippines. Bakit nga ba? Why is there a need for us to integrate or use culture-based education here in the Philippines? First, of course, in our enhanced basic education of 2013, otherwise known as the RA10533, under 10.2, education shall be gender and culture sensitive. So as much as we can, we have to tailor fit our discussion, our examples, our methodologies and strategies uh, on our cultural setup. Also, on RA10066, otherwise known as the National Cultural Heritage Act of 2009, under Section 2, it must be part of our pursuit for cultural preservation as a strategy for maintaining our Filipino identity. So these are the objectives to protect, preserve, conserve, and promote the nation's cultural heritage its property and histories, and the ethnicity of local communities. Establish and strengthen cultural institutions and, of course, protect cultural workers and ensure their professional development and well-being. Another one, of course, in the highest law of the land or the supreme law of the land, the 1987 Philippine Constitution under Article 14, it states under these following sections, section one, talks about quality education that is accessible to all. No? Section two, one, complete, adequate, and integrated and relevant education, tailored fit to among our students. Section three, two, study of values such as patriotism, nationalism, nationalism etc. How can we do that? 
Of course, by going back to our root, our very own culture. Section 14, foster the preservation, enrichment, and dynamic evolution of a Filipino national culture based on the principle of unity in diversity. Still, on Article Number 14, Section 15, conserve promote and popularize the nation's historical and cultural heritage and resources as well as artistic creations. Section 17, recognize, respect, and protect the rights of indigenous cultural communities to preserve and develop their cultures, traditions, and institutions. And last, on Article Number 14 of the 1987 Philippine Constitution, we have Section 18.1, the equal access to cultural opportunities through education. So with that, hopefully I have enlightened you on why there is a need for us to realize the need on why we must integrate culture-based education in our curriculum offerings and in our curriculum design. If, just imagine, if all of us will do and will integrate culture-based education in our curriculum, then what kind of society would it be? Of course, it would be a society, it would be a society with a shared mission and vision for everybody's development, for everybody's for everybody's continuous innovation and because of that it's very important this particular this culture-based education will help us to level up our awareness our understanding and of course our appreciation of who we are and what we are as a filipino people so napakahalaga nito huh and as an end to this discussion on the introduction to culture-based education, I'd like to leave this particular concept on the study of Florentino Timbresa, which is all about Filipino philosophy. Allow me to read to you. Magkabikis ang tao at ang kultura sapagkat ang tao mismo ay siyang bumalangkas ng kultura. At ang kultura naman ay siyang bumubuhay sa tao. Kaya kung walang tao, ay walang kultura. At kung walang kultura, ay tiyak na hindi mabubuhay ang tao. Let us go back to where we came from. And let us dwell to our own identity. And in order to do that, let us utilize culture-based education as a tool and as an aid for us in better understanding and in better appreciation of our identity as a Filipino people. Muli, maraming maraming salamat po sa inyong lahat. Thank you very much, sir. Any last reminders to our viewers for today? Kagaya ng sinabi ko sa inyo, ang iniwan ko sa inyong pananalita ni Tim, mga, mga salita ni Timbreza, mahalaga ang pag-aaral natin ang kultura. Huwag nating sayangin ang sarili nating kultura. Patuloy natin itong yakapin sapagkat sa pagyakap natin ito ay niyayakap natin ang ating sintang pinagmulan. Muli maraming salamat po sa inyong lahat at maligayang pagtuturo at pagkatuto para sa mga madami na sa, sa marami nating nanonood na mga guro at mga magulang ngayong gabi. There we have it. In behalf of Vibal Group Incorporated, I would like to thank our speaker for today for this very insightful learning session. It is an honor to have you with us today, sir. And to all our Kavibao viewers, all thanks to you for your continuous patronage to our daily learning session. Don't forget to register to get your e-certificate of participation. We also encourage you to subscribe and watch on our official Vivao Facebook and YouTube channel. 
Muli, maraming salamat at magandang araw sa ating lahat.